This is an i5-13500. Yeah, a bit of an odd number, but it's a very unique CPU because firstly, it's very affordable, roughly around $250, and it's got 14 cores. Yes, that's right, 14 cores. But what's most interesting about this is that this is the lowest of the 13th gen CPUs from Intel that still features the full fat media engines or the iGPU inside of this one. So as a video editor, this is a very interesting CPU for you. And the more interesting question is, how does this compare to the competition with the killer media engines inside, but still 14 cores? Let's find out. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. First, let's talk about the specs of this so you can see kind of on paper where this CPU lines up and how this is different from the likes of 13600K and the 12600K from previous generations because all of them are i5 and the Ryzen 7600X as well. So this has 14 cores, so six of them are P cores and eight of them are E cores, so you have 20 threads and 14 cores, which is the same on 13600K, but the 12600K only has six P cores and four E cores, so the 13500 has extra four E cores compared to the 12600K. The 7600X has just six cores and 12 threads. The max turbo frequency though here is the lowest on the 13500 at only 4.8 gigahertz only. It used to be very, very high just a few years ago. The 13600K has a 300 megahertz higher max turbo frequency and the 7600X has even higher turbo frequency. So that's almost half a gigahertz higher. And the 12600K is actually still higher at 4.9. The PCIe lanes and the DDRs is exactly the same on the 12th and 13th gen, 20 lanes and DDR5 and DDR4, but we are losing on L2 cache. The 13 600K has 20 megabytes, whereas the 13500 has 11.5 megabytes. Now, I do have an interesting kind of a comment here that I believe that Intel has by software actually limited that just to slot this into a little bit of a lower CPU. I know this is a bend actually from 13600K, maybe even higher, 13700, 13900K. We don't know that. But the thing is, to actually have megabytes less. That means that there is quite a high chunk on the chip that they've literally cut off or literally disabled because it's just the megabytes and it's exactly the same CPU. So my guess here is to actually make sales for the 13600K, they've just limited the 13500K with a little bit of lower cache to make it perform a little bit less, even though I think and I believe that full 20 megabytes of L2 cache is on this CPU, it's just disabled. Unfortunately, we can't enable it though, but it's just what binning process is called basically. The TDP is 65 watts, which is quite a bit less than on the 13600K, and the max turbo power is 154 watts that it can pull from the socket, but I didn't see that much pulled. I saw up to 144 watts pulled, which is actually just a tiny little bit less than the 13600K. We have the full UHD 770i GPU, and it's on the same 10 nanometer process, and the price is $250, something like that. For the latest pricing, I highly recommend you check out the links in the description below, where you can see the latest pricing, and check out the different shops as well, so you're not gonna get ripped off by buying it off Amazon, even though Newegg has a cheaper, or b &H or Adorama, or Walmart, or wherever you like to buy your CBOs. Just check it out in the description below, so you can know the latest pricing in there, because if the 12600K, for example, is a lot cheaper, the actual conclusion of this video might be different, just so you know. I'm gonna leave the AMD and Intel test bench setup specs in the description below so you can see which test bench setup I was using for both of these systems. Now, first of all, I wanna talk about the memory controller because usually on the 13th gen, we have the new generation of memory controller, which is better than the 12th gen memory controller and better than the Ryzen 7000 series, which you can see on the 13600K is 5600 mega transfers when you've got two channels or basically two sticks applied. But then when you've got four sticks applied, it drops down to 4,000. So that's like the official specs where you've got the most stable performance. But when you look at the 13500, then the actual memory controller isn't as good. 
So the memory control is kind of been down as well. You only have 4,800 mega transfers per second and then with two sticks and 4,000 with four sticks. Now I was testing this actually with 5,200 mega transfer sticks just to keep it all the same with all of my 13th and 12th gen setup and it was working completely fine. But it is a silicon lottery there as well. Your memory controller with your CPU might not be so good and you might not be able to run them at 5200 mega transfers per second, but I was able to do that. But in order to get the most stable and best performance, you should run them at gear one, which means synced memory controller and RAM speed. So if the memory controller is 5600 mega transfers per second, for example, on the 13600K, then your RAM should be running the same speed. The XMP should be exactly the same. So your RAM is not gonna be running much higher than this, then would be gear two if it's like double that or something like that. On the 7600X, we have 5200 mega transfers per second with two sticks, and the 12600K is 4800 mega transfers per second. So basically, the 13500 has the same memory controller as the 12600K or the 12th gen CPUs. Looking at the power consumption, here you can see that the 13500 is only 4 watts less than 13600K but we're getting quite a bit of a slower performance than the 13600K. We're pulling more wattage than the 7600X because we've got more cores and we're pushing that just so you know as well. But the 12600K is the most efficient out of this lot of CPUs here. First of all, Cinebench R23. The 7600X is actually 8.5% faster in the single core score. And bear in mind the 7600X is about the same price within few dollars of the same price of CPUs right now because AMD has dropped the pricing. So check out the latest pricing for that as well in the description below. But the single core is faster because the clock speeds of 7600X is 5.3 gigahertz compared to the 4.8. But the multi-core performance is 27.5% slower. The 12600K is about 7% faster in the single core performance, but about 15% slower in the multi-core performance. The 13600K is about 10% faster in the single core and about 16% faster in the multi-core score. So the four watts extra that we get on the 13600K, as you can see, we're getting quite a lot more performance because of the clock speeds are much, much higher. In Geekbench 5, 7600X is 17% faster in the single core and about 25% slower in the multi-core. 12600K is 4.4% faster in the single core and about 15% slower in the multi-core and about the similar results on the 13600K that 8 and 12% faster in the single and multi-core scores respectively. In Blender, we can see that the more cores actually make a ton of difference. For example, the 7600X is quite a bit slower, 17 to 20% slower, and the 12600K is about 14 to 20% slower as well, which just shows that those four extra efficiency cores really do make a difference on the 13500. The 13600K though is about 20 to 23% faster in the monster junction and classroom scenes, which is just interesting that though this extra cache on the CPU and extra four watts pulled, but much higher clock speeds, are making a big difference here compared to the 13600K and 13500. In Photoshop, the 7600X is actually faster, five to 11% faster depending on what you're doing on Photoshop, but it's because of the single core speed that's so good on the Ryzen 7600X. Photoshop loves very fast cores here, and that's why it's much better. The 12600K though here is about 3% slower, which is interesting because in Cinebench we saw that the 12600K was actually faster in single core speeds, and the max clock speed is faster, but here in Photoshop, we are actually slower. The 13600K is about 10 to 26% faster, in Photoshop as well. Moving on to Lightroom Classic, the 7600X here now is actually slower because the single core performance doesn't matter here as much, even though active score is very much related to the single core performance. So about two to 4.5% slower on the 7600X. 12600K is about three to 6% slower and the 13600K is about seven to 20% faster, which is just amazing. The passive score 20% faster, which just means you'll export those photos on the 13600K much, much faster than 
on the 13500. And Premiere Pro, which is usually the bread and butter of these Intel CPUs, we can see that it truly is. The 7600X at the same price point is 30% slower on the extended overall score and about 36% slower in the standard overall score. The more embarrassing bit is the standard and extended live playbacks where the standard live playback score is about 60% slower on the 7600X. In other words, the 13500 is more than twice as fast. The 12600K here is interestingly about 7 to 10% slower and the 13600K here, very interestingly, is performing pretty much the same. It in fact actually loses slightly on the extended overall score, which just shows how good this 13500 with the really good media engine is in Premiere Pro. So for video editing, if you want to save extra 50 to $70 or something like that, the 13500 really makes a ton and ton of sense because you're getting very similar performance to 13600K. Moving on to After Effects, the 7600X is about 5% slower in the overall score. Obviously, multi-core score is about 25% slower because we have a lot less cores and threads. The 12600K is about 6% slower in the overall score, and the 13600K is about 6% faster in the overall score. Now, in DaVinci Resolve, we can see that the 7600X is only a few percent slower, about 2.7 to 1.5 in the standard and extended overall scores. The 4K media score is quite a bit slower though here. But interestingly, the GPU effects and fusion scores are slightly faster. The 12600K is about 4 to 6% slower in the extended overall scores, and the 13600K is only slightly faster, about 2 to 2.5% faster in the extended and standard overall scores. So in DaVinci Resolve, again, we're very close to the 13600K. In V-Ray, the 7600X is about 20% slower because of the cores and threads. The 12600K about 15% slower, but the 13600K about 18% faster. So in conclusion, if we are looking at the 13600K, which is about $70 more expensive, you can see that the 13500 is actually a very, very good buy and you get a lot of performance for that. And as a video editor, you get a lot of performance from those awesome media engines here. So this is kind of like the best bang for buck where we get a lot of the cores, maybe not as high single core performance, but still all the good multi-core performance and still very, very good. Obviously, as you can see, for the same price point, AMD doesn't give it a competition really, and it's a lot more better with this Intel CPU, especially if you do H.265 and some of those codecs, which we don't have hardware acceleration on AMD side. But then at the same time, if you're a photographer, for example, then on Photoshop, the 7600X will make a little bit more sense at the same price point. So to me, this as a crate for $250 is absolutely amazing, amazing CPU. And for like 90% of the people out there that are doing this semi-professionally, perhaps starting their businesses and looking for a PC for around $1,500, this is a killer, killer CPU. And I highly recommend you go check out my best bang for buck latest guide in the description below to actually get some of the recommendations there. And when watching that video and you're thinking, look, Larry's recommended 13600K, feel free to go with the 13500 to save extra $70 if you really are on a budget. But I do want to mention one more thing, which are the power limits. Previously, you remember that the non-K chips from Intel actually defaulted back down to about 65 watts or something like that, the TDP, what you get. So you only get like a burst of power of the high power and then it clocks down much, much slower. Actually, this has slightly changed now. Intel has removed the PL1 and PL2 limitations from the CPU. So Intel is not limiting this. It is actually limited on your motherboard. So some of the B660 motherboards, not all of them, but some of them, and some of the lower end motherboards, maybe B670 motherboards and so on, they will actually lock the power limitations in. But that's not all. If you run this on the Z 
motherboards, for example, Z690, Z790, you can run this open gate. It's not called open gate, but you can run this unlimited power as long as you want. So you don't have to worry about, you know, running down to that 65 watts TDP and so on. So this is absolutely amazing for that. Just before buying the motherboard, make sure that your motherboard does support PL2 and PL1 uh, limitations change, or you can actually change it or motherboard will just let it run as much as you can so you don't have limitations of that very very important thing the only downside i can think about this cpu is that i wish it drew a lot less power than the 13600k i wish it pulled roughly around the 12600k around 113 watts or something like that but because we are pulling 144 watts maximum we're actually pulling about the same as the 5950X Ryzen from previous generation or the 5900X from Ryzen previous generation. So you do need a bit of a beefier air cooling, but if you're still on a budget, I highly recommend checking out like Thermal Ride Payless Assassin 120 or something like that. That is about $40 and it's an insane, insane cooler. So make sure that you do get the latest pricing in the description below and there's no deals running on this. So you do get the best price point. But if you do wanna build yourself the best bang for buck, create a PC, then there's BC build guides in the description below. I highly recommend you check them out because I honestly believe this is the best build guide and buying guide for creators ever published anywhere on the internet. I've done a ton of research, ton of actual testing, and I know that these parts will the, be the best for you. So if you're interested in getting the best performance for your PC, check it out in the description below. Thanks guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.